makes me sound ancient But sons and daughters That shit was amazing Can we take it back to 95 Before we had this drama in our lives Just staring at the screen every day and night I miss the rush of living in real life Go get your Valorian you got in that bag candy cigarettes and a playboy mag many used to have to work for, that. Work, for that. work for that wait for me gotta dial up can't call my landline cause it's all tied up just bike over then oh Look at me, take a picture, it'll last longer. The mirror on the wall say I'm getting stronger. Hey yo, the mirror don't lie. Hey yo, the mirror don't lie. Look at me, take a picture, it'll last longer. The mirror on the wall say I'm getting stronger. Hey yo, the mirror don't lie. If you want the truth, don't close your eyes. We got our back against the wall, we gotta fight back. I need a theme song, this the right track. I ain't got no cape or no superpowers. Just confidence and self-esteem, the world is ours. I believed in me when nobody didn't. This ain't no freestyle, just some facts that's written. Come on, let's hear it for the boy. He bringing pain at the same time, joy. I bob and weave through the crowd, so untouchable. At first they hate, then they loving you. It's a crazy cycle, but I'm going through it. I wish I was lying, that's why I show and prove it. I'm destined to be one of the best to do it. I ain't saying I'm the GOAT, but I'm closer to it. I should get a statue in the front yard. Man, I'm shooting up my stats like a shooting guard. Look at me, take a picture, it'll last longer. The mirror on the wall say I'm getting stronger. Hey yo, the mirror don't lie. Hey yo, the mirror don't lie. Look at me, take a picture, it'll last longer. The mirror on the wall say I'm getting stronger. Hey yo, the mirror don't lie. If you want the truth, don't close your eyes. I'll give it to you in 3D or even play by play. I'm your guest announcer, are you here today? Yo, let me get a show of hands if you rockin' with me. Ain't no stopping us now, we bout to bounce quickly. I'm bout to start a movement, put your fist up. Everything all black from the wrist up, yeah. Leather gloves, no prints, what? We about to dip a uh, deep cut, yeah. Now bring it back like a boomerang. Who that man? Do that thing. Coming through like Buddha Bang. Setting booby traps for girls and goofy cats. Hawk tied and handcuffed through in the back. Zip locked and sealed up and tossed away. I don't know about your future, but it's bad today. I'm a prophet and a guru and the rap police. You in the belly of the beats. Masterpiece. Look at me. Take a picture. It'll last longer. The mirror on the wall say I'm getting strong. Hey yo, the mirror don't lie. Hey yo, the mirror don't lie. Look at me, take a picture, it'll last longer. The mirror on the wall say I'm getting stronger. Hey yo, the mirror don't lie. If you want the truth, don't close your eyes.
what you've done With each breath we give away It'll never be the same I'm chasing somebody who won't ever ease the pain But I don't want to
Hello, where's my kiss at? Hold up, it's been a day, where have you been? Chilling with some friends on the West End She said I saw you in a story with that one chick The one you got drunk with When we started dating, you were being reckless Look, babe, it's not what you think She pulls away and pours another drink Yeah, yeah Gotta find my way to you Even though you're next to me No matter what I do Your heart is drifting out of reach Head on the water, I'm swimming harder Trying to keep this alive Gotta find my way to you Now that our love has caps Hold up, it's been a day, where have you been? Chilling with some friends on the West End She said I saw you in a story with that one chick You know the one you got drunk with When we started dating, you were being reckless Look, babe, it's not what you think She pulls away and pours another drink Yeah, yeah Gotta find my way to you Even though you're next to me No matter what I do Your heart is drifting out of reach Head on the water, I'm swimming harder Trying to keep this alive Gotta find my way to you Now that our love has captured
Cigarettes and a Playboy Mac. Many used to have to work for that. Work for that. Work for that. Wait for me, gotta dial up. Can't call my landline because it's all tied up. Just bike over then. superpowers just confidence and self-esteem the world is ours i believed in me when nobody did okay welcome to the live build on the floor switch the camera over all right as you can tell we're in a newer office but this is our main office at the current time if you watched our last build we were actually in this office we just didn't have the backdrop done so the backdrop is up and we're still missing a few things but that's okay um we are on system build number 21 so let's get into it let's start to take a look at what we need how to build this is going to be kind of a tutorial just like the rest of the live streams it just explains how to build an entire system from start to finish and what you'll need to do so so let's switch over look at me take a picture it'll last longer the mirror on the wall say i'm getting stronger hold the headset up just bear with me for one second if you want the truth don't close your eyes you're gonna need start with you're gonna need, you're gonna need a, some sort of screwdriver a clipper a knife a small screwdriver set a flash drive with windows 11 or windows 10 loaded on it 
Yeah, let the gloves no pre will also need obviously some space to work on. So we're gonna move all this stuff out of the way for right now and we're gonna go to the parts. So the parts for this build are going to be an Intel i3 12 gen. That's an i3 12100. A drive, which is a 500 gigabyte NVMe drive. This is a gen PCIe 3.0, which is fine. There is 4.0 out, but this is the one that's not this machine. Ram, we're going with uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 megahertz memory, and that's two eights. Of course, there are engines memory. MSI for the motherboard, which is going to be your MSI Pro H610M-G DDR4. This is Windows 11 compliant, obviously TPM 2.0. It is ready for all processors, including up to, I think, 14 gen. So, also power supply, just to let you guys know, this is a Thermaltake power supply, smart 5100 watt power supply. It, we're choosing this power supply because we are not doing a graphic card. It is fine for this. If you're doing a high-end graphic card, you will not want that power supply. You will want something a little bit more. Let's get the building. Let's get right into the motherboard first. We're gonna start with the motherboard. And RAM, and hard drive, and processor. So let's start over up some of these boxes. And let's get to it. Let's, actually, you know, let's open the motherboard box first. Just take your motherboard out. The motherboard usually comes with a few little bit of accessories. You're going to have your SATA cables. We're not using this since we're using an NVMe drive. We're going to put that off to the side. An IO shield, the dreaded IO shield. This will be used for the case and will be mounted to that for the motherboard into this. It will also come with the little screw mount for the NVMe drive which we will show a little bit later. Comes with a little badge, CD, and the installation manual. We don't need these, so we're just gonna put those away. We're gonna build on top of the box. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, let me know if there's any problems with sound. I did move the microphones around, so it's a little bit, might be a little weird. All right, so, all right, another word. So let's get the motherboard out of the plastic bag. Do not build on top of the plastic bag, build on top of the box. It is an anti-static bag, but the outside of the bag is not anti-static. It's all the inside of the bag. All right, so let me put this out here. Hopefully this is kind of straight. I'm gonna really reset the cameras up. It's a little funky, but anyway, moving on. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to install the CPU, the RAM, and the NVMe drive. So those are the three spots we're going to basically be handling, as well as we're going to be using the front panel connector when it goes into the case, the USB, sorry, USB 2.0, and the audio jack, as well as the USB 3.0 for the case. By the way, the case is a Thermaltake H17. If you haven't seen it, you will see it in a few minutes, and I'm only going to go through that. You'll see the front panel connectors and all that stuff. So let me just go over the motherboard really quick. I'm gonna bring this way up because it is hard to see. This connector right here is JPF, sorry, JFE1, which is, stands for the jumper front panel one. The directions of what gets plugged into where is right there on the motherboard, right next to it. It is really small, but those are the connections that you're gonna be using when you put it in the case. This is for your front panel case. This is like your power button, your reset button, hard drive light, and your power switch. Uh, if you're into, if you have SATA connections, they will be on this side of the motherboard. And these are your four SATA cables that you can connect in. SATA connections you can connect in. A little more closer to this side, you can see your NVMe socket here. A little closer, there we go. NVMe socket here with three different sizes. You'll probably be using the one that's further out which is 2280, that's the size. And you also have a Wi-Fi card that's optional if you want to put a Wi-Fi card in. There is a little area for that. 
Um, we are not doing that, but if you do have Wi-Fi, you will want to buy that card specifically for this motherboard. Your CPU cooler will run right way up here where it says CPU fan, which is closer to the socket. And you also have a system fan on this side, as well as no other connector, and I have to slide now. This is the only other fan connector, so you'll have to run your fan over to here. RAM sockets are here. I'll show you more detail when I get to put those in because they're a little bit bigger, so it's not so hard to see. Let's move back. And let's focus. Focus. There we go. Yes. Focus. A little better. Okay. So we're going to start with the processor first. Take the processor handle up. I'm going to open up the socket like so. Be very careful, this is a socket cover. That black piece here is a socket cover that protects against these pins from getting damaged. Pins look like they're okay. You may want to just take a look just to see if they're okay, but do not touch in here. You should not be putting your finger on that. You don't want to get anything on it. Let's open up the processor. This processor comes with a heatsink and fan, so we don't have to get one. So we're just gonna use the one that comes with it. Here's the processor, it comes in a little plastic clamshell. You're gonna take the clamshell out. You're gonna take it out of the clamshell by just folding up one of the sides of the tabs. And there, just be careful it doesn't pop on you because then it'll go everywhere. Let's take out the processor. The processor itself has a itty bitty arrow on it in this bottom left corner here. That is going to line up with the socket on the bottom left corner of the motherboard where it also has a little arrow to let you know that that goes to that side. Be sure to put it in the same direction. Both arrows go the same direction and just drop it into the socket. Be very careful. You shouldn't have to push this down too much. It should just line right up in the grooves and then you should be able to put this down. And when you put this down, this will pop off. That is normal. You may want to keep that. Push the handle down and underneath, and it will clamp down. You'll want to keep this little plastic cover for the, the CPU socket cover, just in case you have to change your CPU or send your motherboard back in for return. You'll need this to do that without damaging anything. But in our case, it's probably fine not to have it. Or if you want to upgrade and you want to change your motherboard or sell your motherboard, you might want to have that and take your processor out and then put them, you know, put the cover back on for the person, for the next person. So it doesn't get damaged in shipping. All right. The heat sink and fan. We're just going to take this out of the box at this point. You want to leave this in the box until you're ready because it already has pre-applied thermal paste. As this one is here, this is the thermal paste. That's that little gray stuff in the middle of the copper socket, cover fan, and that copper heat sink. So we're gonna use the pre-applied stuff, but if you don't like the pre-applied, you can use, you know, uh, some sort of uh, isopropyl alcohol to get rid of that if you want to. So moving on. After you have that, you want to undo the wire. The wire basically is just for playing in for the fan power. Just going to line that up on top of the processor, and we're going to push down on all corners, opposite side corners, of course, first. So you're going to push on one side here, push the other side, you're going to hear it click in. Same thing on the other side, click it in. CPU fan, you're going to just plug straight into the one that says CPU fan, which should be a four pin connector. And you want to open up the RAM sockets because that's going to be next. I'll take this out of here. RAM sockets. The RAM. If I can open the box. There you go. All right. So adjust. There we go. RAM is going to be plugged into these two sockets here. You're going to open it up. Make sure that you have it the correct direction. You're going to take the little plastic piece off the logo. So it's off of there before you put your RAM in. 
you're going to align this little notch. You're going to align that notch with the notch that's down here. You make sure it's the same direction. It should only fit in one way. Hello, where's my kiss at? Hold up, it's if, been a day. Where have you been? Chill I didn't see what I'm doing. The there we go. All right. Should click in the place. Shouldn't be too much force, should just be a little bit of force. Same thing, repeat for the second stick. If you have a second stick, if you have up to four sticks, you could put four, all four of them in if you need all four. Um, if you do have four sockets, you'll want to make sure to plug it into the ones that correspond to the proper sockets. In this case, we only have two sockets, two RAM sticks. There's not much confusion about that. But when you have four, you may want to double check to make sure you're plugging them into the correct two sockets. Sometimes they're spaced out a little bit, most of the time they are, and you'll want the dual channel mode for DDR4. DDR5 dual channel mode is still kind of exists, but it's not as heavily uh, taxed on it. Let's move um, put the wire down here. Just gonna tuck the wire in, we're gonna do a little wire management before we start putting it in the case. And we also have to put in the NVMe, which I almost forgot. What we're going to have to go back to is the little bag here that came with the motherboard, which is a little standoff for the NVMe drive. We're going to take that out. Standoff is kind of small, so I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit. There we go. That is really small. And that basically screws into the board, and then this latches over the NVMe to put it in place, which I'll show right now. Let's go back. This is a 2280 drive, so that's why I'm going to go to the last one here, which is 2280. I don't know if it's labeled. No, it's not labeled, but usually it's the last one for the, for the largest drive. And it requires a very small screwdriver to screw that in. So I'm just going to grab one of my small screwdrivers here. It's a Phillips. What number is this? Phillips. It's a PH1. Yeah, PH1. Be curious. Yeah, here comes the steady part of me trying to get a screw. This small into the board without breaking anything. There we go, okay. Alright, so let's screw down. You're gonna open the latch so it's in the open position so you can accept the drive. This is really, really small, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a second when I put the drive in. The drive also comes with a screw, so be sure not to drop that on top of the motherboard. Just open up the container to the left or away from it, just in case you drop the screw. It's, we don't need that screw. That's only if you don't have a screw on the board, but we do already. So we're just going to put it at a 45 angle, and we're just going to slide it in place. And I'm going to push it down. And we'll put the little latch. Push down all the way, and then you should be able to slide the latch into place, and it should be sitting nice and flat. It shouldn't come up, shouldn't allow to move around at all. It should be perfectly in sta stable condition. All right, we're gonna clean up a little of the garbage off of here before we continue, so it's out of my way. I actually have the garbage this time. Right. Toss this, toss the plastic. This you should recycle your plastics, but that's up to you. All right, we have also a manual that came with the processor. I'm just in a sticker. I'm gonna put this off to the side. We don't usually put the stickers on for the customer because they're really annoying and they don't look really any better than anything else. But uh, we always put them in the, in the bag, and if they want to put them on themselves, they can. Uh, we don't need the small screwdriver anymore. Alright, all right, so we're going to get the case up here. Let's also get the power supply out at the same time. Let me put this off to the side. Uh, power supply. 
I'll do this now before we put the case up because it's going to get really tight. So, you're not cut towards yourself. That's probably a bad idea. Anyway, good pass fly out. In the power support, in what's in the box? It's in the box is basically a manual, another manual power cord, which we're gonna give to the customer, of course. Some zip ties, some four screws, which we need to screw in with. That's awesome. And we need the power supply itself. Out of the box. Oh, hidden candy treat. No, I'm just kidding. It's all about that. All right, so just opening up this, just basically taking it out of the plastic wrap. Come on. Get in here. We have a bunch of different connectors on here. Uh, I'm gonna leave this bundled up right now, but you're gonna have SATA connectors, motherboard. We'll, we'll go through each one in about a few minutes. I wanted to show the fan on the bottom. The fan itself is going to be facing downward in this case. It'll be pulling air from underneath the case. And uh, just a normal off switch on the back, which you will not be able to see when I go put it into the system. So that's your initial on off. And then you have your power on the top of the case. Let's get the case out and start doing the builds. Let's put it into the actual case. Side panels. Side panels are just four thumb screws. You just unscrew them. Usually, thumb screws work with your thumbs, but they don't sometimes. So I'm gonna need a screwdriver. So I don't lose anything, I'm just gonna use my magnetic tray, but you don't need a magnetic tray, you could just put it in a bowl or a dish or something. You don't have to have anything really professional, professional for that. All right, side panels are off. So we're gonna look at the back of the system first because the back of the system usually has more of where all the cabling is going and everything else, so let's just take a look at that. And there goes the case covers, don't do that. Oh, yeah. This is what happens when your studio is not fully set up. All right, I'm gonna put this over here. Hopefully it won't break it. That's better lean up, okay, good. Sorry, a little minor. Over here. Okay, so these are your front panel connectors. This is also going to be the cable bu uh, bag for the entire system for all the screws that you're going to need. So let's get to it. Let's get those out. Let's take that off. Take all of the wire, um, wire zip ties like this that actually have a metal wire in them. Be sure they're not be used in the case. I don't like using this because it does have a metal wire and it could fray over time or land on something that should, it shouldn't land on. So just don't use that, use a regular wire tie. Just stitch those, you can use the plastic ones. And it comes with wire ties, zip ties, whatever you want to call them. And a bunch of those, we'll put those up to the side. We'll use those very shortly. This is metal, we get rid of that. Right. In the bag, we have got a few things. And we have a speaker, the most annoying thing ever, and we will not be putting install in this. This is basically a diagnostic speaker. When you hit the button for the computer to turn on, it usually makes that little beep noise. That's this stupid thing. So we don't use this. So we're not Unless you need to diagnose your machine for like what decodes and stuff like that you need to do, then you may want to use that. Now everything is labeled pretty much, if you can see it. It says used for 2.5 inch SSD. We leave this in the case because we don't have any 2.5 inch SSDs right now, but just in case the customer wants to add one later, 
they have the screws inside the case. Same thing here for used for 3.5 inch HDD, which is a 3.5 inch hard drive. This is for like a spinning rush drive. We're not doing that, but uh, we leave it in the case anyway, just in case they want to upgrade or add something to it. And I say upgrade, but it's really good like an downgrade. Now these are all um, the screws for the rest of the case, motherboard screws, um, power supply standoff, plus I still what motherboard standoff, so power supply screws, etc. I'm gonna open this, but we're gonna put it, you know, in our little handy dandy magnetic tool case here. Oh, that little stuff in there. We go. So that again doesn't get lost. Alright. So we go over the screws really quickly. This is a motherboard standoff. Which is blurry. There we go, there we go. That is a motherboard standoff. It is just a put screw there so you can put the screw into there. This would get screwed down to the to the bottom of the case and the motherboard would sit on top of it. We, they should be already pre-installed for some of them so we may have to add more of these, we may not. We'll see in a few minutes. This is a regular screw that is used for screwing into that standoff and that is just a regular thin screw and that goes right into that standoff for each section. And we have one more screw, which this screw is your power supply screw or graphic card screw. If you have a GPU, you would use this for any of the sockets or if you have any add-on cards, like PCI Express cards or anything like that, this would be for that card to be screwed to the case so it doesn't move. It is a thicker screw. It looks kind of like a regular Phillips on top and it is a thicker stem. So this goes back uh, for the Case, this is the case, this is the thumb screws for the case, they're still plastic, um, we also have a Phillips end, and the Phillips end also, just in case you want to unscrew or screw this tighter, and I think that is all the screws here, they're not that many, uh, oh, there's one more, okay, I go. Alright, so there's one more screw. This screw is, this type of screw is used for another fan. So if you have another case fan, you would use this type of screw. It has a thread that has like a binding thread that will start into the, uh, the fan to, to grab it. So we don't usually use these unless you have more case fans, but some, most of the time when you buy a case fan, they also come with this. So you may not have to worry about that. Let's take that out. Let's put this back. Uh, let's go back a little bit here to here. The front panel connectors, we're going to show where they all go on the motherboard, but this is basically, they're all pretty much labeled. They're just kind of hard to see. This one says USB. There we go. USB. This is also, that's, this is USB 2.0. This is USB 3.0. 3.0 has a blue kind of small pin connector. USB 2.0 has more chunky pins, and there is a few less of them. Same thing for here for audio, HD audio, labeled HD audio. It's pinned out only one direction. USB is also pinned out with only one direction as a block. That means that this one will not have a pin, so it has to fit that type of alignment. Now, Moving on to the front panel, front panel connectors are also labeled. Why am I doing this now? It's because basically you will not be able to see it when I go to put it in the case. It won't be this easy to show you. Um, they're both, they're all labeled HDD, LED. Uh, the ones that are LEDs will have plus and negative. Plus means obviously that's the plus side, that goes matches the plus side on the motherboard, minus is on the minus side. The LEDs make a difference on the plus minus, the switches do not. LEDs are, you know, directional, so you need to have that. Same thing with the power LED. Power LED. 
positive, negative. Yeah, the switches shouldn't have anything, so... Yeah. Just like that. Power switch. It just says power switch. This doesn't matter which way you plug it in, it usually works. Unless you're using server motherboards, if you have a server motherboard, this really isn't the video for you. So there's a lot of other little additions. But reset switch. It's all labeled. They're all black, which is nice, so it at least matches everything. Alright. We're going to take those cables, we're going to put those away, we're going to put the power supply. Is going to, this is the bottom of the case, by the way. Power supply is going to go here, the fan is going to face downwards towards the bottom part of the case. The other portion of the case, which is the power supply, will be facing the back part of the case, which is this is the back. This is the front. This is the bottom. And we're going to just slide that right in here, and we're going to screw it in. So we're going to do that now, just to get that out of the way. And then we're going to start our motherboard. So let's get the power supply in. And the power supply is going to go fan down to the bottom of the case. Which is top on this screen, unfortunately. But you guys get the idea here. Um, screws. Where are the screws? Ah, there they go. Screws. There's some cable ties. We're going to use those later. They can't, they, the products that I chose, they come with a lot of cable ties. It's a little easier to build with. If you don't have cable ties, you can buy them on any website you really want. They have, you know, mono price is pretty good for, for uh, stuff like that. You can also try Amazon if you feel lucky. from the back without seeing what I'm doing, which is probably not a good idea. You know what, I'm gonna flip this around a little bit so it makes more sense also to you guys, because it's at the wrong, wrong angle. Okay. Let me flip this over. So, to show you what's going on, this now this is the bottom of the case. So we're just gonna basically put the power supply at the bottom. I'm just gonna line it up with the back of the case. There's gonna be holes. There's only four holes that it should fit into. This is a lot easier, by the way, to do it while it's standing up. But, but if I stand it up, you won't be able to see anything. So I am just gonna attempt this without that. It works better when you're not working against gravity. There we go. Yes, the label is upside down, but that's because I want the fan to pull in air from the bottom. Now you could, technically speaking, you could flip this power supply over and pull air in from the case. This is kind of bad though, because it's not really designed for that. And it's, you know, it's only got like a very small gap of room here, so you'll have a lot of air being pulled down and in and out compared to the other way where it's pulling air from the bottom instead. So it's pulling air in and then circulating air back out to the back side of the case. That usually is the best way to go. It's also got a filter on the bottom too to keep most of the dust down. Note about screwdrivers, you don't have to use an electric screwdriver. I'm happy to use one because it's just easier for me. But you can use a regular screwdriver too. Any Phillips like number two screw, screwdriver should, should work. Just gonna cut the little tie off of all the cables so I can get those free. Alright. Now our next step is we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna put the motherboard in. So we're gonna take this, rotate it. Yeah. Okay. Now to give you an idea of where things are, this is the back of the case, this is the front of the case, this is the bottom of the case. That's 
the top. Back in the case we have an, an exhaust fan that comes with this, we will plug this in when we get the motherboard in. We're going to first put the I.O. shield in because I forget to do this every freaking time. And if I do that, it will be bad, so I'm not going to forget, and I'm going to do it first. So take the I.O. shield out. Be careful, this sometimes is sharp, so if it is sharp, it's not your fingers, but I am going to bend up these little pieces so we don't get stuck on the motherboard. Uh, the IO shield itself will be labeled with H. Will be labeled, here we go. DisplayPort, HDMI, you know, VGA, PS2. Why is there a PS2 on the board? All right, whatever. USB ports and an ethernet jack as well as audio. Um, it's already stamped in there. You don't really have to do much. You're just gonna put it into the case. You're gonna take this is the side that's going to go to the back part of the case. It's going to show on the outside of the case. So you're going to see this, and that's going to go this way into the case. So we're just going to go into that square socket where it is located on the back of the case. It should only fit in one spot. You should be able to pop it in. Again, be very careful when you push that in. Do not slip your hand, because if you do slip your hand, you will end up cutting your finger. Uh, aluminum, I think it's aluminum, it is pretty sharp, so just be very careful. Yeah, we're just gonna push stuff out of the way, just gonna get the wires out of the way. Now, to get down to the board, so we're gonna look down on the board and you're gonna see one, you know, there's gonna be a label here that says Mini ITX and Micro ATX. There's a number one on Mini ITX, there's a number two on Micro ATX. We're doing micro ATX, so everything that's number two should be filled in, which it is. All of the connections should be there. You should count up all of these little stands, and then you should look at your motherboard and verify that you have holes in all of those areas and that you had the same amount for the count. I'm just gonna take a quick look. If you're unsure, just count everything up. Make sure you have the same amount of screws as you have standoffs. If you don't, and you don't, but if you have an extra screw, then something went wrong. Take the motherboard back out. You obviously have either too many stands or too little. So just go back and readjust all the stands to fit under the proper holes. Do not proceed further until you have gotten the proper amount because you could you could ground out your motherboard, or in other words, short out your motherboard, not ground out, I'm sorry. Short out your motherboard, and that will be really bad. You'll, you'll end up having to arm your motherboard because you basically forgot to just put a screw under there. It will make contact with the case improperly, and you will have a grounding problem. Well, shorting problem, but yeah, same difference. Screw in. Just put screws in all the slots that basically, all the holes that you have. Again, if you're missing one, go back and uh, readjust the standoffs appropriately. So you don't end up having to short anything out or have a problem. using an electric screwdriver you may want to adjust the number of how much torque you're going to be pushing in here I usually leave this around 17 you can put a little lower if you want you know it doesn't really matter too much but you don't want to go too too high because it'll it may strip out the screws if you go too quickly especially if you're a new person about using a screwdriver you may not want to do that if you're really new just just use a regular hand screwdriver don't you don't have to be fancy here it's gonna take about the same amount of time okay. Okay. all right let's Alright, 
Once it's all screwed in, you should just give it a little wiggle test. And by wiggle, I just mean just give it a little push back. It should not move. And uh, now we're ready to pretty much do cabling. I'm gonna take the um, exhaust fan and I'm gonna run that wire back to the top because it has to go over here. So I might run it out and back around if I have enough cable. If I don't have enough cable, then we'll have to go the other way. Let's see. We have enough cable. Just enough. Maybe. I'm gonna try it. Let's try it. I just want to make it a little neater. I just don't want to have wire going straight across where the fan's gonna hit it. So I'd like to go behind where it'll go behind here, go out. No, you can't see that. It'll go out the back and then come back around to the front and then it'll connect over here. So let's put that in and see if how that looks, if it fits, if it reaches. Just cheat a little here. Lift up. You're just gonna plug the fan in. It should only go in one way. This is a three fan, fan connector, not a four, but it's okay to use a, oops, it's okay to use a four pin. I mean, a three pin on a four pin, it's four pins, it's fine. Just as long as you use, the, you know, you, you key it down to the correct direction. It should fit with no problem and it shouldn't give you too much of a hassle. So that's out of its way, that's fine. We're gonna put another cable up here for the power for the motherboard, as well as another power for the motherboard. That's your 12 volt rail, that's your regular 24 pin. Let's, um, yeah, let's, let's bring the cables around. Uh, so we're gonna flip this back over, and then, being careful not to hit anything. All right, so on the back, Ooh. it's out of focus again, there we go, okay. So to fix this up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out some of these cables from the bottom. We'll just pull all them out. So. Just gonna go over all the cables really fast. So here, this one is your 24 pin to your motherboard. How do you know? Because it's the biggest one. The next one out, is, it says PCIe on it. It is actually labeled. Thermal Take does a pretty good job of labeling everything. So it does say PCIe. This is for your graphic card. If you have one, we're not using it, so we're gonna put this off to the side. We have some more connectors. We have a Molex connector, which is a four pin Molex. We don't use these usually. It's used for older devices or some RGB stuff still uses this stuff. We're gonna put that off to the side. It also has a floppy controller connector, which that's really old. But uh, some people have tape drives that use this, so. Right, we're, not, we're not using it, so we're gonna put that off to the side. But it's nice to have it, if you have it, you have it. Same thing here, SATA connectors. These are more new, this is gonna be for your like spinning rust drives or SSD drives, uh, which you may have. We don't have any in this case, so we're gonna put it off to the side. Uh, we have CP a CPU, this is the 12 volt rail. This is gonna go up in this upper corner over here. And that is basically your eight, I think it's eight pin, eight pin, yeah. And it's also labeled CPU, so you know which one it is. Now, there's one little careful thing that you may wanna do. If your power supply is not labeled, check your connectors, because if you look at these, they look pretty close to the same. So it would be bad if you plug your PCI Express into the one that's not supposed to be PCI Express. So let's not do that. Let's not make any mistakes. Let's bring it into the proper spots. And uh, that's all your connectors, I think. Yeah. You just have more connectors of just more SATA connectors. You have a lot of SATA connectors on here. But that's fine. So we're just going to take this one and put the CPU one up here, which is basically your 12 volt rail. Just going to sneak it in here. That's going to get real run that way. And I'm just gonna put the things on the proper holes here so that we know where it's going. But this is going for your 24 pin into the first bigger hole up here. And then what you're gonna do is you're also gonna populate all the front panel connectors. You wanna bring the front panel connectors over. I usually do this in a little bit of a group here. I usually grab the front panel connectors first, like all the little buttons and lights and switches. That's gonna go all down at the bottom on the motherboard down below. 
and that's going to come up through one of the grommets that are over here. So the grommet right here, this is just going to slide up in there. Just push all the cables, all the cable out to the other side for now, just so that we'll, we're going to bring everything back and then cable manage once we're done. So. All the other cables, the 3.0 pin okay, cables should go right kind of with your, your 24 pin. The audio and your USB go into the far uh, grommet holes over here, which I think is the furthest one to USB. A little hard to get underneath there because the power supply is there. If you want, you can do those first before you put the power supply in. If it bothers you, if you can't get it snaked in. Just push that all the way. Again, just put all the slack on that side for now. Just so when we flip this over, we will have a little bit more uh, room on that side so we can actually put things in. Now, all the other cables. I'm just going to tie these cables up really quick. These are all the other cables that were on there that we said we're not going to use. So I'm just going to give it a quick tie. It's okay, don't, don't have cables like all over the place. You want to, that's the whole point of cable ties is to get them out of the way, tied out, and you know, out of your view. Just clipping off the tails. This is going to go down below. We're just going to tuck that out of the way for now. I'm going to neaten that up a little more once we're getting closer to done. Let's flip this over. Oop. Don't try to Okay, so on this side, focus, focus, there we go. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just, we're gonna plug in the simple one, the 24 pin right off the bat. It, it, there's a clipped end sign to this, so there's a little clip here. This clip goes onto that ledge of that connector. It should snap in place. It should only fit one way, so if you're pushing too hard, you're doing it wrong. And so just flip it over, maybe out the wrong direction. Should clip in, you should hear a little click. It's a very soft click, if you don't hear it, then you probably didn't push it down far enough. Same thing here, USB 3.0. We're gonna connect that into the connection here, which is the small pins, which are right next to the 24 pin. It should pop in and it should click in place. It's keyed only one direction. So again, if you're pushing too hard, and it's not going into the socket, then you need to flip it over probably because you got it the wrong way. Uh, again, don't push too hard is pretty much the, the answer to that. CPU at the top over here. If I can grab it. That same thing with a clip. The clip goes onto the ledge, which is reverse, of course, for this one. So let's turn around. It should click in place. And then what you want to do is all the front panel connectors. The front panel connectors are going to be hard to see here because that's why I showed it to you earlier. It's going to be very difficult to look at since they are very, very small. This is reset switch. I need the HD. HD. They are usually the same directions as the most other motherboards, but if they are not, you may want to consult the motherboard manual or you want to look on the motherboard itself to see the layout that they have printed on there. Right. Power switch on top of that. All right. And power LED to the left of that. Positive, negative. Got it. 
All right, so you got uh, USB also. USB is gonna be plugged into the one that says USB one. Audio is also going to be plugged into the one that says J Audio one. They're keyed out, so you, you know, that little black square means that's the one that goes to the one that doesn't have a pin. And you just push down and that's it. All right. That looks like a mess, but we're gonna pull all those wires back right now. So we're gonna flip it back over, pull all the wires back, do some wire management, and then we should be ready to boot. Let's flip over. But now here's where you gotta be very careful. Because if you pull on these wires a little too hard, you will probably pop them out of the socket or break something. So let's not do that. Let's just pull it taut. So it's like just basically pulled, the slack is pulled back and that's it. And we're gonna tie it down using down to these little tie downs, anchor, I should say tie down, little anchor points. And we're gonna use the thinner ones just because the thinner zip ties, so they fit down. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm bending the tail. I'm bending the tail up, in this upper position. That will help it go underneath the anchor without it having too many problems. So I'm just gonna flip this over. I'm gonna show how it goes underneath the anchor. Just slide up, in, pull up from the other side. And you're gonna just tie it down. You repeat this step for all the cables. Uh, you're gonna use all the anchor points back to wherever it is. In this case, this is going down back to the power supply, so I'm gonna use this avenue here. This one, I'm gonna use the avenue that's right directly in front of it. Again, it's kind of common sense. You're just using the ones that are closest to wherever the root is going. And uh, you want to just tie these down and clip them when you're ready. So I'm just going to do that. Again, you're going to repeat the step probably five, six times. So let's just keep going. Yo, what you got in that bag? Candy cigarettes and a Playboy bag. Many used to have to work for that. Wait for me, gotta dial up. Can't call my landline because it's all tied up. Just bike over here. Now this is kind of optional. Technically speaking, you don't need to do all this cable management. Uh, at this point, you could just go right into booting up. I like to make sure it's all cable managed because we have to maintain the system all the time. And therefore, it's a little easier to maintain when it's nice and clean and not too much stuff in the way. This wire is going to be the long one. Yeah, all right. That has to go down this way. All right. And then this goes. This looks like a lot, a lot worse of a mess than it really is. It's not all that bad. This is not that many cables. Tie those back a little bit in one anchor point because they're not the mirror on the wall saying I'm getting stronger. And you're the mirror, don't lie. If you want the truth, don't close your eyes. I'll give it to you in 3D or even play by play. 
I'm your guest announcer, are you here today? Yo, let me get a show of hands if you rocking with me. Ain't no stopping us now, we about to bounce quickly. I'm about to start Now, if you notice, I tied, up. Everything all I tied this back further, up. because yeah. just in case you want to use this SSD no slot, you can we without being interrupted. If I put the cables over here, yeah. you won't be able to actually use back that. Like be too thick, so that's why I'm do doing that. I'm going to tie these down, cut a cut, all the tails. Through in the back, zip locked and sealed up and tossed away. I don't know about your future, but it's bad today. Okay. I'm a prophet and a guru and the rap mm -hmm. police. You in the belly of the beats, masterpiece. All right, Look that's it for the cutting of this. We're gonna flip it back over. Longer. We're gonna now pretty much boot it. I think we're ready to boot up for our first test and start loading the operating system. Let me switch over to the other camera. Bear with me for a second. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect up keyboard, mouse, power, all the fun stuff. So let's do that. Um, yeah, where, where are we? Okay, not this. HDMI. We got power. And we have an Ethernet cable over there, which we're not going to connect for right now. Let me put this in. We'll start loading the OS in two seconds. Let me just get set up here. Put the power cord on. And video. HDMI at the top. Keep the mouse. So any keyboard and mouse is fine. We'll start loading the operating system, but we'll do the BIOS first, and then we're going to do the operating system. The keyboard and mouse, I just usually plug it in for the USB 2.0 connection, but if your keyboard and mouse doesn't work in that, just try the 3.0. Some keyboards and mice are very really picky. This one probably is. But we'll see. Um, just get that in there. And you gotta take that flash drive that you created with everything on it, wherever it may have went. It's, it's messing up over there. Flash drive. Flash drive, I have the BIOS, I have the, I have the BIOS, I have Windows 11 on here as well for a, a, a bootable disk just to load everything up. I'm gonna plug it into USB 3.0 so it'll go a little quicker. And um, yeah, we should be ready to power this on. So let's power this on. Let me go to four. Get me in the corner there or something. Oh, and let's hit this on. Give it across the fingers. Probably one of the problem. Alrighty. Go to the BIOS. It comes up. There we go. Okay, so this is kind of normal. It'll say CPU or memory change. It's the first time running, so you're gonna have to hit F1. BIOS, I think. Go back in the BIOS, hit delete. Delete on the keyboard should bring you to the BIOS. If, uh, if I hit it fast enough, it should do that. Ow, I'm in the wrong, again, the wrong port. This is part of the problem. I knew this keyboard was taking. To booting up the window. We don't want to do this right off the bat. We go into the BIOS first. So we're going to exit this. We're going to go back to the BIOS. If it lets me. Ow. 
Ah, okay, here we go, BIOS. So let me make this a little bigger for me so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so just what you want to do before you start anything is you want to make sure that you have the proper processor installed, which it's showing the proper processor. The BIOS version is a little out of date, I think. So we're going to update that really quick. And the temperature, you want to make sure the temperature is holding steady, which it is. You don't want it jumping all over the place too much. If it's going really, really high, then you don't want to start any type of BIOS update. You want to fix the cooler first before you do that. But what we're going to do, we're going to go right to M Flash. And hit that, it says it's going to reboot and go to M Flash. That is OK. You're going to reboot a few times, so just be very patient with this portion. It's going to go to enter in flash mode. Now it's going to load up all the disks. We only have one disk here that has data on it, which is going to be this one. It's a USB flash drive. I already put the new BIOS date on there. And if you notice, when I highlighted it over it, it is saying version F v1 dot v1 dot f0 which is a little different it is 1031 2023 it's a little newer bios so we're going to just do that we're going to say select this file yes it's going to start flashing the bios during this process do not power off your computer i can't say this enough uh don't do this during a lightning storm or anything else uh if you lose power during this bio up, BIOS update, uh, this BIOS, this motherboard does not have a flashback utility. So if you do this during a thunderstorm or something, you will most likely break your motherboard. You'll have to send it in for return and let them either reprogram the chip for you or, you know, where you'll have to, um, well, that's pretty much the only option you have because there is no flashback on this BIOS, I don't think. so. If you have a flashback BIOS, then you would be able to load it onto a USB flash key, reboot the computer with a certain sequence, and then you'll be able to do it off of that flash disk without seeing anything. Again, that's more difficult than watching a really good nice screen like this, so just be sure not to lose power during this time. If you have a UPS battery, have it plugged into the UPS battery while you do this. Just in case you lose power, you might have enough power to finish out the remaining BIOS update. Most BIOSes are not that long, as you just saw. It just took to 100%. It's gonna automatically reboot. We wanna go back to the BIOS. So just hit the delete key. going to ask you some stupid questions really quick. It's going to ask you which type of cooler we have. In this case, we're using the box cooler. But if you have a tower cooler, you choose tower or water cooling on a water cooler. This is just to basically set the fan type. So we're just going to say box cooler. But if you have a you know tower cooler or if you have a water cooling, you would choose whatever one that would come up with. Uh, for this, we're going to go to memory. We're just going to double check. Actually, I really want the advanced mode. I really don't like this mode. Let's go to F7. Settings. You go to system status. Just quickly check everything. Time is always wrong and date is wrong. For us. Uh, this is 7. 19. 100. Uh, at this point, you want to go back, you want to go to advanced, I'm just going to go through quickly through the settings, just take a look at everything, make sure everything looks okay. Most of this is standard. I would just turn on uh, the memory profile, which I'm going to get to in a minute. I always turn on multi-monitor if it's off, especially for integrated graphics, just in case somebody has, wants the PI to put two monitors. USB control, everything's on. Super I.O. I just turned off the serial port. There's no serial port. Just for security reasons. 
power off. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. I wanna turn off the MSI driver utility installer. I hate this thing. I don't know why they put this in here. It's just aggravating. UEFI, yes. We're not gonna test the drive, no. Booting, booting is fine. Hello. Uh, we're gonna just change all the boot devices to the way I want them, which is the Kingston drive first for now, which will change so the Windows boot manager once we load. But I don't want it going anywhere else, so we're just gonna disable all this. That's fine. Gonna go back one. I think it's on overclocking for the memory. Yes, here's the memory. So you want the XMP profile, you want to enable this. Because if you don't, you're not going to get your full speed of your RAM. Uh, when you do do this, you probably should do a memory test. We run a memory test later uh, before we give it to the customer. I don't want to run that right now because it literally will take like all you need to run. So we're going to do that. We're going to exit back. Uh, and then anything else we're going to save? That's it. We're just going to save and exit. So we're going to go back to settings and then save and exit. Save, exit, reboot. Yeah. It's gonna review all the changes, that's fine. I'll let this go. That was a bootable disk, it'll boot right to Windows installation once it reboots. Let's throw this garbage out. This disk that I made, I also copied all the newest drivers onto it and our Windows 11 bloatware removal tool we also put on there, so I'll show you guys how to use that. That's in another video also that we have if you're interested in running that yourself. It's a free download. Hit next, you just choose your language, you choose your location, we're gonna hit install. I'm gonna say I don't have a product key, but I do have a product key, but we don't wanna enter it on stream. I'm just gonna say I don't. We're gonna choose Windows 11 Pro, not N, just Pro. You wanna to agree to the agreement because you really have no choice. I'm gonna do a custom install. I'm gonna choose the drive that we have installed. If you have multiple drives installed, I would recommend that you disconnect the drives that you don't want Windows to be installed on just in case so it doesn't overwrite your data. That is a kind of a dangerous screen. You can actually do partitions and re-add partitions and some crazy stuff. So I'd recommend that you just have a cleanly formatted drive and have the only formatted drive in the system when you go to load up. If you're reloading Windows, take off all your data drives, just disconnect them or take them out of the machine. I'll put them back in later. Let's gonna quickly install. Uh, during this install process, I don't want to make a Microsoft account, so we have it disabling the Microsoft account. Uh, we just make a regular user account. It gets too confusing with a Microsoft account for a lot of our users. Plus, there's really not really an advantage. It's just more ad tracking and garbage. So we try to avoid that. I also don't have the Ethernet connected during this time. I don't have any type of networking connected to it. I have it totally standalone at the current time until this fully loads. All right, 83, 84, come on. Yeah, it's, it'll take a minute or two. This loading process is not very exciting, but uh, once it's done, it'll reboot. We'll start to do drivers. We're not gonna activate Windows because we have to put the key in but you should activate your windows, you should buy a legit key. It's gonna say installing updates, but there's no network connection, so I can't do that. It's gonna restart, can do that. You can also should run all the Windows updates. It's still gonna be Windows updates, even after loading uh, from a fresh install, you're gonna have a lot of Windows updates. I recommend you do those and just get them out of the way before you start loading programs. 
So I do recommend doing the drivers first before you do the Windows updates. Just so you have the proper drivers already downloaded and installed. Okay, this went back to the screen. We don't want that. So we're gonna have to go back to the BIOS. Sometimes the system will automatically pick up the new Windows Boot Manager, and in this case it didn't. So we have to go back to the BIOS and switch it back. So we're gonna go to settings, we're gonna go to boots, we're gonna go down to first boot option, and we're gonna change that up to the new one, which is UEFI Windows Boot Manager right there. We're gonna hit escape, I'm gonna save, save and reboot. By the way, you can use the mouse if you want for this, I'm just so used to using, you know, the keyboard. But yeah, you can use the mouse also. Well, it now should be putting up the hard drive. It's going to say getting things ready. There we go, standard services. Yep, getting ready. It's always preparing. I'm very impatient. This is probably not going to take too long, but I feel like it's an eternity. Uh, during this time, I usually like what I like to do is I check to make sure all the power lights are working, power lights working, HDD light is working, the hard drive is blinking. I'm not going to test the reset switch right now, but that should be tested also. And test all the front panel connectors, like all your USB ports, your audio. I should make sure that all that works. If it doesn't, you're probably plugged into the wall, you know, connection on the board. Or maybe you might have missed a pin when you connected it. That's happened before. Just a moment. Come on. There you go. Alright, we're going to go into the nice, lovely Welcome Windows 11 screen. It's going to annoy us with this stuff, asking dumb questions about what country you're in. US, we're gonna skip this keyboard. We're not gonna do that. We're not adding two keyboards. Now it says, do you want to add an Ethernet network? Just say I don't have internet. Continue with limited setup. And that'll allow you to just enter a regular username. But in this case, we're just gonna put the one just so we have something. Doesn't really matter. Password, we're not gonna put any password for right now. But you put your own password. You should put a password on your account. Getting things ready for you. This might take a few minutes. I, it's gonna take a lot more than a few minutes. Is it a few, two or two or more, or two or four? I think it is. It's a lot more than two minutes, I think. Oh, some people are in chat saying hi, hi. Hopefully, did, hopefully that's not been sitting there. I've been kind of like rambling here and... Hi, Mr. Uh, Mr. Epic. Okay, Mr. Epic, hi. That peace sign for somebody. I'll blow the mods. Okay, so now we're loaded up. It's gonna load, it's gonna attempt to load all this garbage, but since I'm not connected to the internet, that's not gonna load right away. The minute I connect to the internet, that's gonna populate. We're not gonna run the Windows bloatware removal tool yet because we're gonna do the updates first. So let's go to settings. Let's, um, actually, no, I'm sorry. We're gonna do drivers first. Let's do drivers. I'm gonna copy over from my flash drive all the drivers that I have set up. Else, I'm going to be one folder. We're just going to put that in the C drive here. 
Take a second to copy. Once that copies down, we're just gonna go to the drivers folder and they're all zipped up here. So we're just gonna extract, extract them out one at a time. Just install them one at a time. I can't reach, reach smart screen because I don't have the ethernet adapter connected. That's okay, just pass it. Uh, you know, I'm 100% sure that this flash drive is clean because we actually erased the drive before we started. We're gonna restart later, we're gonna do all the installation and then come back. And um, then do a reboot. I like to only reboot once. I don't wanna have to keep rebooting like three, four times, especially for drivers. If you don't feel comfortable about that, you can just install one, reboot, install the second one, reboot. It, it's not, it's just more time consuming. Um, software, yes. This is pretty much a next, next, next kind of situation. You just hit next. Uh, how's your day? My day's doing all right. How's yours? It's not bad. A little busy. But this is never a problem. Do we ever be excited about the holiday coming out? If you guys have a holiday coming out. I'm just excited every day off. Cool. Yo, what you got in that bag? Candy cigarettes oh, what's and a Playboy bag. I'm trying to install Maybe software. Not, okay, so this one's not supported. That's okay. Uh, oh, that's the RST. That, that's not always supported on every motherboard. Just bike over there. Oh, 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 we won't do that one. By the way, I'm just right-clicking on these and hitting extract. You could also hit extract on the top, on the top of the explorer one as well. It's the same, same thing. Install, let's run. VGA, okay, when you do the VGA drivers, usually you lose connection for a second. It's gonna probably do a blink. This is normal. If you have Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, it really doesn't matter. Any one of the manufacturers when you install the graphic card driver has to remove the current one and then replace it with the newer one. So you're gonna lose video for like a quick second when you change that out. We got our back against the wall, we gotta fight back. I need a theme song, this the right track. I ain't got no cable, no uh, While well, the VGA driver's gonna go, that one's gonna take a few seconds. I'm gonna start on the audio driver, which is our last one. And that's the link that I was talking about. I just lost that for a second, that's okay. Audio. It's a crazy cycle, but I'm going through it. Yep. I wish I was lying, that's why I show and prove it. I'm destined to be one of the best yeah, to do good. it. I ain't saying I'm the goat, but I'm closer to it. I should get a statue in the front yard. Man, I'm shooting up my stats like a shooting guard. Look at me. Testing a new build. Uh, we're getting to testing. Well, this is just built right now. So. But uh, yeah, when we're done installing all the drivers, then we're gonna test everything pretty quickly. We're just gonna make sure like, you know, audio is working, you know, uh, USB drive, flash drive are working in the front, uh, power button reset, stuff like that. We should all be checking to make sure that works. Just because that's things that we have to plug in. Yeah. We would run a memory test, but it takes like hours to run. Uh, but we usually use mem uh, mem test. I think mem test is eighty six. I think 
So yeah, we usually use that. I usually put like in a, a I usually put in the notes man, down below do after, after I'm done with the stream. I usually put all the tools. And booby traps for girls and goofy cats. Hawk tied and handcuffed through in the back. All right. Zip so we're ready for a reboot at this point. And I'll do a reboot. But it's bad reboot. today. I'm a prophet and a guru and the rap police. You in the that. belly of the beats. Masterpiece. Uh, but yeah, we would don't yeah, we do normally test a little bit more by the way. We we do run a memory test. The memory test takes I'd say at least five to six hours to run. Because uh, I you like go through all iterations, which is probably overkill. You don't really need to do that for a, probably a regular person's build. Probably after like the, the second pass, you'll probably be fine. But I like to run it, let it run for the four full four tests. This is only got 16 gigs of RAM, so this might only take maybe like an hour or two to run. But like if you have 32 gigs of RAM or 64 gigs of RAM, you're gonna be there for a while. That mem test takes a long time to complete. It's one of those things where you just don't wanna sit there and watch it. You would just let it run and you know, you come back the next day and see if it's good to go. It's also kind of like a burn-in test, I guess. Some people call it like that. It's a little old fashioned, but it's there. All right, we're gonna check the drivers really quick. We're gonna go to device manager. And we're missing two, so we're gonna fix, fix that shortly. Let me just uh, run, let me put the network adapter on at this point so we can get some internet. I think I might have missed two drivers somewhere. We'll find out. The network card driver should definitely be there. Well, hopefully this is plugged in. Okay, so we're gonna run Windows updates first. Of course, you see that it now just installed all this lovely junk. We're gonna get rid of that shortly. So let's do a Windows update first. Let's get all this patch. All right, patching. You'll see there's a bunch of updates. This is normal. Uh, no matter if you do a full fresh install, I, did, I actually do a fresh download of the you know, operating system. So we're on 23H2, so at least we're not totally far behind, but you're going to have more patches in there. You're going to have, you know, the little mini updates between, you know, the major ones. It also wants to do an Intel subsystem install. I kind of let Microsoft run it at this point. If, if, it, if that one's the newer driver, it'll install the newer one. Most of the time it works okay. If you have a driver conflict and you want to go back to the one that's on the motherboard or the device, just in case that happens. All right, Mr. Epic, thanks for stopping in. Have a great day too. gonna download it's gonna take a few minutes we're gonna do a reboot uh, we're also gonna do the Windows 11 removal tool and get rid of all that stuff you know, remove all the bloatware this is a little bit pretty long process but um, well worth it to make sure everything's installed right I'm gonna also customize this a lot uh, we have edge but I like to download Chrome All this stuff you gotta agree to just to download Chrome. Who uses Edge nowadays? Feel this way. It's my lucky day. Uh, it's my lucky day. It's my lucky day. Hey, hey, my lucky day. Hold up. Don't need a I personally like Firefox better, but not a lot of people like Firefox, so I, I go with the, the crowd here. We're not going to sign in right now. Yes, we want to set this as defaults. Go to Chrome. We will set this as defaults. It will change all these out. Not this one. Let's just switch it to Chrome. SPGs. I don't know why it doesn't do all of them. 
feel like Microsoft's trying to hold on or something. Don't need a box, don't go to rabbit's foot, so to be told. Okay, okay, close that. I'm gonna double check on the install. Oh, all right, a few more percentage to go. Uh, during this time, I also like to set the change the um, the power settings. Power plan. About the power options. We're not going to be on balance. Let's get to forever. High performance. Change the settings out for the hard disk. We're going to turn that to zero because it's an SSD and VME. You don't need to do that. Wireless. Maximum performance. Sleep. You want to make sure sleep is off right now. Again, this is something the customer normally set for themselves, but I like to set it all to high just so that they don't they don't get a phone call of why did my computer shut off after 10 minutes? And they don't realize it went into sleep mode and to get it back out of sleep mode. Sometimes some people don't know to hit control escape to get it out of that or click the mouse and they end up powering the system off and becomes a huge problem. So we just turn it off and then if they want it on, they can turn it on and make extra advanced changes. Uh, I don't know if that time, is that time right? The time's right, but I don't think it's got the right... Um, the right uh, time zone. Yeah, we're in the wrong time, but it's not right. Eastern time. Automatically, yes, yes, yes. Save now. See, now, now we're back to it. That's correct, okay. Good. I'll let that update. All right, while this is updating, we're gonna go through the privacy settings really quick, because obviously they're always wrong. So we're gonna go to general, we're gonna turn all this garbage off. Uh, I don't want it tracking the customer or anything like that. I kind of like just make sure everything is off. Diagnostics, you don't need it to keep doing feedback and stupid garbage. Again, this is stuff that they can change. We leave this at moderate. We don't do Microsoft account searching or history. Uh, search permissions. Windows search. This is fine. I usually leave that alone. Location data. Leave it off. Camera. I usually turn this off unless they have a camera that they want to use for Zoom meetings or something. We will allow, will allow access, but we'll only select whatever software they want to have access to. This limits down the fact of the camera usage. If you do have a webcam, I recommend that you get one with you know, a privacy filter as well as a um, option to show a light whenever the camera is on. So you know at least if something is going on. Privacy filter is just really nice to have just so you don't have to worry about you know, anybody coming in and hacking your computer or anything, or taking a photo or anything, without you knowing. This is a good, one good precaution, but a privacy filter definitely helps, because then you can just, it's a manual filter, you flip it over. Or some cameras have it built in. Uh, Logitech, I don't remember the model number, but one of the Logitech cameras have it built in so that when the camera is off, it will automatically close the privacy filter so you know, like you can physically see that the camera's off. If a person has a problem with getting access to something, then at that point they may need to come back in here and flip on your privacy settings to have access to that. Tasks. But it's better to be off than on, you know, just to read things without knowing that you know that program has taken that information. It's really annoying that they suck all this. Videos. more to this. Documents. Downloads folder. Hello. 
We may have to create a script for this to make this work, because I, I get tired of setting this. Uh, screen borders. And screenshots I like to turn off also just in case. Alright, now that's what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to settings. We're gonna also open up Windows Cut Deep and see where we're at. Which we are getting there. It's still going. Alright. Make yourself a little slow today. It's fine. Pending restart, pending restart. This one's still downloading. That's the, the display driver. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm going to customize the taskbar a little bit. I'm going to turn off the widgets. So I like this stupid search box. Someone's done. This one's still downloading. All right. While that downloads, we're gonna we're gonna show you how to do Windows 11 bloatware removal tool that we created here. Windows PowerShell. We're gonna run it as administrator. We're going to jump into the main folder drive. We're just gonna go to B1 because that's where we have everything. We're gonna go to drivers. Uh, where did I put this? I didn't put it in here. Can I copy? Can I copy all the drivers? Alright, well, that would help. We have the files. Uh, of course, I didn't copy it over. Well, we'll have to do that another time because I don't have it here. But uh, any of our other videos you can go back to. We have also a video fully dedicated to the Windows 11 lower removal tool. You can try it out. It's just a script. You can modify the script any which way you want. It's all open. It's all open. It's an open source file, so you can modify it. Antivirus, we're just going to double check it. We're just dismiss a few of these little problems that are not problems. Just want you to put a Microsoft account in. We're not doing that. We're still waiting on this 1% here. I did the display driver. I don't understand why. Let's try this bit. Do another one. It's a limitation to the output I have here. It's not uh, any limitation to the graphic card. You can actually go to 4K with it. Yeah, let's do a restart. We're, gonna wait. We're not going to wait for that. Let's uh, update and patch. And then after this, we're, we're pretty much done. We're going to have to wrap it up. I'm going to basically close up the uh, case, run memory tests. Oh, install any of the custom programs and also activate Windows. They're going to put their key in and stuff like that. And then it's ready to um, box up and uh, be delivered. All right, it's updating. All right, while we're updating, I mean, it's literally just going to say a percentage, it's going to reboot. Yeah, it's at zero. This is gonna take a long time. I don't think you guys wanna watch a uh, percentage. <laughs> I think this will be pretty, pretty boring. So, 
That's about it for this Windows 11 build, the System Build 21. It's been a great uh, stream, so uh, yeah, basically, if you want to see any of our other builds, we have them all up there. We have obviously 21 of them. So 20 more up there, so if you want to check them out, you can. We will have some new videos coming up very soon. I got some real link stuff that I got to post, and I got some more notification information on that, as well as a moving vlog, which I never got around to doing, but I will probably just cut one together really quickly because I have some footage for that, as well as a um, laptop replacement screen, which I have to still edit. So. Stay subscribed, you'll get uh, notifications on that. Uh, if you want, you can use the bell. I'm not sure if the bell does anything on YouTube, but definitely stay subscribed, you'll definitely see it in the feed. And um, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.